All right. Um, I'll share with you an incident. My first time in a nightclub. My first time. <laughs> or rather my first embarrassing moment in a nightclub. Like I've told you before, I've made these videos. My first time in a restaurant. My first time in a five-star hotel. This is my first time in a nightclub. Now, um, just a very brief, short backstory for those of you who do not know. I was born and raised in a very simple poor to middle class family. Uh, we never went to nightclubs, we never went to brunches and all the five star hotels, we never went for all that. So once after I left home, you know, I wanted to experience the world. So one of the things that I had never done and I wanted to do was go to a nightclub. I never went to a nightclub, you know, the discotheque and all that. So I never went there and I was very curious what happens there because I was, you know, I to see people. Now, the thing was, I also didn't have friends who would go there. So, I decided one day, this is at the age of, I think, 30, 30, 31. 31 or 32. That is when I started doing all my crazy stuff. Uh, at the age of 31 or 32, I decided I'll go to a nightclub. Okay. So, first things first is dress up. I never knew that uh, going to a nightclub means you can wear jeans, you can wear, you know, white, like sporty shoes or, you know, casual shoes or casual wear or, you know, wear a nice casual shirt. I wore office attire, seriously. <laughs> I wore, <laughs> what do you wear uh, to the office, no? I didn't wear a tie, you know, the typical, I look like an accountant. I'll see if I have photographs. So, <laughs> so embarrassing, man. And I didn't have any tattoos, huh? by the way, that time. My Frenchie and all that. So, dressed up like a typical accountant. And another problem. I didn't know that nightclubs generally start at, you know, 11, 12 in the night, midnight. Okay. I, like an idiot, I thought 8 o'clock is a good time. So I drove down, I think at around 8, uh, and this place where I went to was Kiva Lodge, K-E-V-A, near Al Nasser Leisure Land. For those of you who have been in Dubai would know this. Kiva Lodge, it's near Al Nasser, right? Yeah, Al Nasser Leisure Land. Anyway, I went to Kiva Lodge, near, uh, it's somewhat near Lamsi Plaza area, that, that area. So Kiva Lodge, I went there, parked my car. I noticed there was plenty of parking. I was like, oh, very good. Okay. 8.30. Saw the Kiva Lodge. First when I walked, nobody was there. Lots of, you know, lights were on. It was not like dark and, you know, those uh, flickering white strobe lights and all that. And there I saw two big, huge guys. You know, black, uh, two guys from Africa or something. They were standing there. Big, massive guys. Man, his arms were like my leg as if it was his arms. Huge, massive, big guy, black guy. So I saw those two guys and it was written security, you know. So uh, I was like, uh, what do I do? Uh, uh, hi. And you know, I was wearing that bag, like, think like in India, you know, when they have a, it was actually a man bag, but I looked like one of those typical accountants. <laughs> so I went there and they were looking at me like, yes. They were very polite, but, you know, big voice. Yes. So I said, uh, can I go in? Yeah, yeah, please go. Go. So I said, yeah, thank you, thank you. I walked in. See, when you come so early, there is hardly anything going on. Okay, people are just setting up and getting ready for the night. So I go there, I, I see, okay, lights are on. Everything, everyone's tables are being set and this and that. Like, everything was set, but you, you could still see people setting up things. Uh, and then I walked in where, you know, the main DJ dance floor and all that was there. And there also the bartender was keeping everything there. The DJ was just setting up his stuff. Okay, there was no music. Okay. So I walked up to the bar. You know, where all the alcohol and the drinks are served. And because nobody was there, I was the only guy, this Filipino guy, 
was busy wiping the glasses and keeping everything. And I went and, you know, sat on one of the stools. As soon as I sat on one of the stools, immediately this guy asked, so what would you like? I didn't expect he was going to ask me, what would you like? I was like, uh, okay, what would you like? Um, you know, I didn't want to look like as an amateur. So I was like, yeah, I'll take, uh, <laughs> I was trying to act very cool. So I was looking at all the bottles. There was Malibu, there was Hennessy, there was uh, what? Uh, Shiva's Regal. There was all these alcoholic drinks and I was like, what the hell man, where is the juice? Now, obviously you're not going to show orange juice and this and that over there. So all the expensive bottles. Are. So I was like, uh, so that Filipino guy is still looking at me and wondering like, and I could clearly make out that he was looking at me. I was like, oh, sheesh. So I was like, um, um. and then I think he realized that maybe as one of those accounting idiots, <laughs> maybe one of our Indian, Indian fellows, okay, he said, would you like a Red Bull? Straight away, yes. Would you like Red Bull or would you like orange juice or would you like pineapple juice? He asked me. So when he said Red Bull, ah, oh, yeah, Red Bull, Red Bull, I'll take a Red Bull. Okay. So he's like, okay, fine. He took out a Red Bull, he took out a glass with ice, poured the Red Bull in that, and uh, he put one lemon. Now, <laughs> another stupid thing. I didn't know you have to pay immediately. I thought like a restaurant first you drink. And, uh, so as I took that, now remember Red Bull is, I think it was five dirhams, five dirhams those days in Dubai. Okay, you're talking of nearly 25 years ago, man. No, 15 years ago, sorry. So it was five or six dirhams. So I thought it was five. <laughs> I took out five bucks. So he said, uh, um, it's, it's uh, I think 45, I think 45. The minute he said 45, I was like, 45? My, then I was like, ah, oh, yeah, 45, yeah. Uh, mm. Yes, 45, yeah. I wanted to look sophisticated, you know. So I gave him 50. He took it. I think he clearly understood. I was uh, first time there. Now I was like, bloody hell, man, this Red Bull is so expensive. Instead of five bucks, it's 45 bucks. What is this nonsense? So I, he had that can, that can remaining. I was like, there's still Red Bull in that. I don't want him to waste. I said, uh, can I take the can? Yeah, yeah, take the can, yeah. So I took the can also. I was like, precious little Red Bull is that, you know, our Indian, you know, don't want to waste, yeah. paid a lot of money. <laughs> so I was, took the straw. And the lime was there. And then, you know, there was that white kind of small bowl with lime in that. So I was like, yeah, I'm paying so much money. Might as well take all that lime. I was like, uh, can I have some lime? I was worried whether it's for free. I said, there's any charge? No, no, you can take. You give me the full lime. Oh, I was very happy. Okay, it's free. I put all the lime in that. So I paid so much money. I'll take all the lime. I'll not leave it. So I put... <laughs> I took I was nice, nicely drinking and trying to look cool. Then uh, finally, after I drank that, no, no, sorry, I took that and I was like, okay, maybe I can walk around. So I paid, I looked. So then I was walking around and there in, you know, on the dance floor, there are these big ass speakers. I was looking, oh, very big speakers, very big, very big. Now the DJ, he saw me standing there. And I didn't pay attention that the DJ was, you know, looking at me. What he did, <laughs> what he did was, he put a song, and I am, imagine, it's a subwoofer, you know, where the doom, doom, doom sound comes. So I stood there, I'm nicely looking at the speaker, I'm kind of feeling it like, oh, very big speaker. And suddenly he puts on song, doom, something, he starts with a beat. I get almost a shock. And I nearly spill my drink, you know, because I, I didn't expect it to be suddenly on. Nearly spill my drink. All the waiters and waitresses and people at the side, they had a good laugh. But I was looking, I was like, hey, hey. yeah, yeah, it's funny. <laughs> so anyway, I spilled most of my drink with that the same sound. So I was like, okay, very good. Oh, I was very happy with the music. You could actually feel it. I was like, oh, you can feel all this. I was very happy. So I stood near, like as if I was taking some fresh air, 
I was standing in front of that subwoofer and getting the doop 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 feeling good. I was like, oh, very nice. Then I went back to the bar. This time, little bit more confident because now I knew how to order. I'll take one Red Bull, please, with the little extra lime. So now I was a little confident. So yeah, sure, sure. You give me another one. So now, anyway, I got confident about my drink. I got confident about walking around. I noticed nobody was saying anything. But still nobody was there. That was another problem. No girls came now. Finally, after staying for, I think, one, two hours, people started to come in. And uh, here's the next stupid thing that I did. People were coming in and nobody was, you know, people come in a group. I was like alone with nobody. So I was wondering who I can talk to. So, and people, when they come to nightclubs, they don't come to talk. And obviously music was loud. So whenever I saw anyone sitting there with the, his friends and all that, like a couple, if the girl would go, I'd talk to her, hey, hi, how are you? And he'd be like, uh, yeah. Like he was like, who the fuck is this? <laughs> I was like, hey, how are you? And all that. Oh, I, uh, saying you come every time and like an idiot I was talking. Yeah, I come every time. Yeah, why? Yeah, yeah. Oh, very nice club. I was trying to make some conversation. He was not even interested. I think the most embarrassing thing that I did in all this was asking random people that I'll take a photo with them. Seriously. I was busy asking, can I take a photo with you? Okay. <laughs> because there was nobody, man. And uh, I think uh, those days the selfie camera was not there. So the other side camera. So you had to give someone the phone and take and... I think most of the snaps came in blurred. In fact, uh, I made a massive error in judgment where uh, there was a couple I asked, can I take a photo with you? And he looked at uh, his girlfriend and he was like, no, no, not her. You can take a photo with me. I was like, yeah, sure, sure. I'll take a photo with you. I was so happy. So after spending the whole day there and the, you know, bouncers were looking at me like, you know, because I keep an eye, you know, they're looking at me going everywhere and everything. And, I think by the time it was 12, I decided to leave. And uh, I looked at the bouncer, I was like, oh, very big. I said, you're very big. He's like, yeah, I know. I was like, oh, okay, okay. He's like, you enjoyed? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was very nice. He said, good, good. You want to stay? I said, no, no, I'll, I'll come next time. Okay. So I was very happy. The following day, I came again. This time, same time. Until the bouncer, I, <laughs> he asked me, uh, when I came the third time, he's saying, hey man, why do you come so early? So I was like, uh, yeah, I come, you know. saying, why don't you come uh, after 12? He's saying, that's where all the girls and I was like, oh, really? He's saying, you don't know? So, so I, I told him, ah, no, I, it's my first time. Oh, okay, okay. His hand was big. He said, come after 12. But he told me, come uh, before 12 or something. He's saying, then you don't have to pay or something like that. I said, okay. So when I came the following, uh, the same day, before 12, I came and I saw the same guy there. He said, yeah, go in. Obviously, because after that, they were taking tickets to go inside. And you can redeem it for a cold drink. So, yeah. <laughs> I would say the most embarrassing thing in the whole nightclub saga of mine was one is not knowing how to order from the bar because I was actually searching for something to drink and I was even tempted to ask him, do you have anything to eat? Which anyway, they don't have at the bar. They have elsewhere. You know, they might have some places they have like fish fingers or something, cheese or something, but nuts. Ah, yeah, peanuts. When I came to know that peanuts were free, yeah. I was very happy. I used to always ask for peanuts. Plenty of peanuts. Very happy. Free peanuts. See, my Indian roots still remain. <laughs> but yeah, if you would ask me the most embarrassing thing, apart from that, I was asking random guys and girls, can I take a photo <laughs> with you? I was so happy. Because, you know, lonely guy. I mean, I don't know anyone. Eventually, I guess with my tattoos and all that, I became a... I, I was not coming regularly, but obviously, once I started to make some friends and they would come to these nightclubs and... Then, you know, with my tattoos, I became known and... Then people would just say, come in, you know? 
Yeah. Yeah. Yes, there was some drama here and there. Obviously, bodybuilder, no? I went into bodybuilding, gained size. Uh, that was another story in itself. Picked up one guy like this and threw him out because he was misbehaving with my friend's girlfriend. That's another story for another day. So yeah, anyway, this was uh, an Indian's first time in a nightclub. Mind blasting. So anyway, let me know your th <laughs> thoughts in the comments below. What, uh, what do you think? And yeah, watching people dance. Oh, I used to see people dance. I was standing there. Oh, very nice. Imagine with my bag. Oh, very nice. I used to stand and look. Everyone dancing. People are doing uh, all that like this, like this, like this. I was like, very nice. <laughs> because I, I, I honestly don't know how to dance. So Anyway, this was my experience. <laughs> Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What did you think of this whole story? Good, bad, ugly? Love to hear your thoughts. All right. Enjoy. Post your comments on below. Love to hear from you. You guys take care. Ciao. Are you fed up of life? Earning a pathetic salary, working long hours, having an ungrateful boss, facing office politics, the constant fear of losing your job, and after paying rent, groceries, shopping, and children's expenses, you were left with hardly any savings. Is this the life you dreamed of? Or do you wish to change your life forever? Meet Loy Macedo, the world's number one personal branding coach. He will help you identify the real you. Position and sell yourself by getting the job of your dreams and make good money anywhere in the world. If you do not believe me, Google his name, Loy Macedo, and you will find 2 million web links online and over 200 recommendations from very happy clients. So the question is, do you want to change your life? If yes, then contact Loy Macedo www.loymacedo.com Who is loymacedo.com? Thinkpersonalbranding.com What are you waiting for? Do it now!